Hey everyone, it's Rob again from Smith's Falls Music, and I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about one of my favorite subjects, the banjo. And specifically, I wanted to talk about the banjo for guitar players, or uh, for uh, what are the what are the similarities and differences between the guitar and the banjo. Now, if you are a guitar player that is curious about learning to try to play the banjo, it might seem a little bit like a mystifying, weird instrument that doesn't sound anything like the guitar. But I came to the banjo as a guitar player. I played guitar first. And uh, so I, as I was learning, I was coming at it from the perspective of a guitar player and using what I already knew to try and uh, transfer over, uh, get some of that transferable knowledge. So I'd like to talk a little bit about that. Um, so the first thing is that obviously, uh, this, this banjo has five strings, uh, and, and whereas the guitar has six. Now there are six string banjos, which are just tuned just like a guitar. There are four string banjos also, which are tuned more like a violin or a cello or a viola in that fifth tuning. And those types of banjos, four and six string, would be played with a pick. And you would just kind of play them plucking or strumming just like you play a guitar. Uh, now the, the five string banjo has two main styles of playing it. Now there's many different styles and everybody has their own sort of twist on it, but the two ones that you will encounter the most are the three finger or bluegrass or scrug style and the claw hammer style, or sometimes called frailing. I'll discuss the, the, the scrug style first. Now the first thing is that uh, a, a five string banjo like this is, is tuned to an open G. So you will have uh, this string up top here, that we'll call this the fifth string, is, is a high G. And then you've got a D, G, B, and D. So the, it's, that's a little bit weird for guitar players. We're used to having the lowest string be on top here and then going all the way up to the highest string sequentially. But this is weird because it throws the highest string like up on the top here where we're not used to it. So, that, so that's tuned to an open G chord, so you can just strum it open and it will, it, will make, uh, it will make one chord. Now, you might see that I'm actually playing with a capo right now on the third fret. That's because I tune my banjo to an open E chord, three half steps down to a G chord. So I have to capo up to get that G, that G chord. And the reason why I do that is kind of a long story, so I won't get into it here. But just imagine that I'm not playing with a capo and that I'm just tuned to an open G chord just like this. Now, uh, Scruggs style, named obviously for, for Earl Scruggs, who kind of pioneered and popularized this style, is played with three fingers, your thumb, index, and middle finger, and is typically played with finger picks and a thumb pick, although you don't necessarily have to. Um, but to get the loudest and brightest sound, you want to have uh, typically a plastic thumb pick and, uh, and metal finger picks. It's pretty standard in bluegrass. And so you would just, instead of strumming, uh, what you'll do is you'll play what are called rolls. And that's just similar to finger picking. If you've ever played a finger style or finger picking or Travis picking or anything like that, it's the same sort of concept. And you're, again, you're going to be using your thumb, index, and middle fingers to create rolls that are maybe like, uh, like thumb, index, middle, thumb, index, middle, or maybe um, middle, index, thumb, middle, index, thumb, or it may be a thumb, index, thumb, middle, thumb, you create all these uh, these different rolls that sound, you know, like they have special names, like a forward roll, or a backwards roll, or a forwards backwards roll, or an alternating or square roll. And these they give you all these different textures and ways that you can uh, that you can use licks. And now the left hand is pretty much the same as as guitar. You would play uh, uh, you would play like a scale play melodies. And if you want to play chords, an interesting thing about the banjo from the perspective of a guitar player is that it's actually not that different. It's tuned to an open G, but actually uh, the, these uh, bottom four strings, uh, D, G, B, and D, are actually, these. the middle three strings are the same as a guitar. A guitar would also have a D, G, and B, and then the top string, the first string would be E, but this is just one whole step down. So two frets down to make it an open G chord. So you could take your guitar shapes, like for example the D chord, like if you play like a D chord like this on guitar, if you take this top string and move it up by two frets, you'll have to switch the fingering around, or maybe you'll do it like this. 
That's your D chord. You just It's the same as guitar D chord, but you just have to move it up two frets. Now, this only applies to the bottom four strings, so if you were to play like a, a, a C chord, you know, you wouldn't play it like a full C chord, you would play it like the bottom half of a C chord, so exclude the A string and the E string, and then add two frets to the first string like this. So that's your C chord, that's your D chord, and so on and so forth. And you put it all together, you put some melody, some chord playing, and you use those right hand rolls that I talked about, and you get that characteristic banjo sound where you might hear a melody, but interwoven with the melody are some, some chord notes so that sounds like this, you know. And that's what the, so that's basically the general concept of how you play the, uh, the, the Scruggs style on the banjo. Now, I'm going to talk about the other style, which is called claw hammer or frailing. Now, this is played without picks, and you would still use the same tuning, typically and you would still use a five-string banjo. Now the big difference is that you're going to use your fingernail to brush the strings like a strum. You would use either your index or your middle. I actually use my middle finger. Most people use the index. And then... Falling out of tune already. And then your thumb would land on the... Uh, as your as your finger is brushing the strings like this, your thumb's going to land on this top string, the fifth string, and kind of pop off of it on the offbeat, like that. Now this is a weird thing for guitar players that are used to leading with the thumb, having thumb being on the strong beats, beat one, beat three, and having those be the bass notes. Now you're going to have your thumb be playing on the offbeats uh, and on the highest note. So that's going to take a little while for your mind to wrap around that if you're a guitar player, or at least it did for me. But uh, basically you're going to do like a strum, strum, thumb pop in kind of a bum ditty rhythm that sounds like this. Or you can slow it way down and it would sound like this. Melodies like this, if you can, if you if you're able to hit one specific string at a time with your with your uh, with your brushing finger, and then hit some chords as well, so you can hit one string, brush, thumb, and that's how you get the characteristic uh, claw hammer or frailing sound. frailing. Now you can play both styles. You don't have to choose one or the other. And I, I enjoy both styles. I, I, I play them in different uh, different bands or different genres and they're, they're both really interesting ways to, to approach the banjo. So I really like that. Um, and so the last thing I'm going to do just as a little bit of a demonstration is to play one tune in, in uh, both of these styles. Just to demonstrate the difference in, in approach. So let's say I was uh, I wanted to play a song like "You Are My Sunshine." On uh, on on banjo, it might uh, on uh, three finger bluegrass, it might sound a little bit like this. see that I'm trying to play the melody and then use my rules to play around it. So it's kind of a mismatch of the melody and the chords and harmony and it's all together and it sounds like it sounds really unique. Now, same sort of concept, I'm going to play that same thing but on claw hammer and that, that'll sound like this.
All right, I hope you enjoyed that or found it informative. Uh, that was uh, my little introduction to playing the banjo in two different styles, specifically aimed at curious guitar players. And uh, all right, thanks again for listening.